Hello and welcome to Dielectric Videos. On today's episode, I'm going to be reviewing the central machinery that is the Harbor Freight 5-speed bench drill press with an 8-inch, uh, which is an 8-inch drill press. So today I'm going to go over some of the uh, experiences I've had using it and uh, tell you what kind of things I like about it and what kind of things I think they could improve on a future design. So here goes. Now the first thing that I really like about this drill press is uh, with the 20% off coupon, you can get this for $58. So this puts it an order of magnitude less than a comparable uh, kind of quote-unquote high-end drill press. But despite having a significantly lower price, the performance is actually quite good. Now I've had this for a few days now and I've been uh, doing some fairly rigorous testing. In fact, if you'd like to see me do a super high, uh, high demand test on this, uh, you can click to my video on uh, the $58 drill press versus quarter inch aluminum sheet stock and see me try to drill some uh, inch and a quarter holes through that sheet stock. In fact, I actually made all four of these inch and a quarter drill holes in this quarter inch aluminum plate using this drill press. And although it did take a while to drill these holes, it did, the, it, did it quite well and I didn't notice any excess sloppiness or uh, any damage to the powertrain afterwards. I also drilled two 7 8 inch holes here and here. In case you're wondering, this is a plate that I'm going to be using in a future amplifier project, and these are for tube sockets. But uh, the drill press did a phenomenal job in remaining stable and, uh, and powering through these cuts, even though probably it was somewhat undersized for the type of drilling I was doing. So now I'll give you a tour of some of the controls and some of the specific features that this drill press has to offer. So here's a quick look at the controls on this drill press. You'll see here the standard uh, spindle actuator or uh, the actual part that presses the drill. And this spindle has roughly just over two inches of stroke length. It's rated as two inches on this sticker here. And uh, some of the cool things about this the table, uh, if you have a wrench, it can actually be tilted horizontally, and for normal use, you can raise and lower it using this friction fit coupling. Now, I don't particularly care for this friction fit device. It's basically on a, a metal uh, tube as the support member for both the upper section of the drill press and the table. And what I find is when I'm pressing down hard on, uh, on a material, for example, if I stick a piece of wood under here and crank down on it, the table flexes quite considerably. Let me move the camera down so you can see that more. But uh, you can see when I apply force here, the table bends a little bit relative to this vertical portion, which is not ideal for making large cuts because it tends to uh, deviate the drill bit from a directly vertical press. Now that being said, for most small applications like this wooden block or anything with just a less than half inch twist drill, this doesn't even become an issue. It's really only noticeable for very large cuts that are probably outside the realm of what this drill press can do. So we'll uh, switch it on and I'll show you a cut. see it cuts very cleanly it doesn't bog down of course I chipped the wood a little bit there because I was not using excellently uh, good cutting technique but you see it has no problem pressing through uh, wood and I'll also get some metal and show you here's that. an aluminum box made out of roughly eighth inch thick aluminum and I'm going to lower the table slightly to accommodate this like so and we'll run a quick drill through this now since this is a thin piece I'm not going to use any cutting fluid for most of the time with metal cutting, I will use cutting fluid. Wasn't too hard at all. It went right through and didn't give me any trouble with uh, chattering or any trouble with the uh, quill moving side to side. Having a look at the other side of the drill press, we can see that there's a switch for the light. And the light is quite useful. It uh, has a little cover, a reflective cover that can be used to uh, aim it, and it also has a flexible line. This allows you to aim it onto the work surface, and that can be quite helpful if you're working in a slightly darker area, uh, or if you're working someplace where the you need to really focus on the piece. 
Now in addition, if we look up here, there is a depth of cut stop here. You can change the position of these nuts and uh, adjust your depth of cut. Right now I have them backed all the way off, so it is actually the spindle that limits it rather than the nuts uh, setting. But you can set any depth of cut that you need with, those, uh, with this shaft here. One excellent feature of this drill press is it's actually a multi-speed. If we open up the top here, you can see there's a roughly, I think this is a 3 8 inch V-belt, and there are five separate positions on these pulleys at which you can set the drivetrain uh, gear ratio. It actually has a belt selection setting uh, chart in here, and obviously the smaller the driving pulley and the larger the driven pulley, the lower the gearing. Now I like to operate my drill presses or uh, power tools in general at a very low gearing setting. And this is honestly the one thing that I really am not so keen on in this drill press. The uh, lowest gear setting available here is only 700, is 760 RPM. The highest gear setting is 3070 RPM. Now this is not ideal for very, very high torque applications. For example, cutting these large quarter inch holes in the aluminum plate. Uh, what I really would have liked is to have like a 300 uh, RPM setting. Now if you watch the video on drilling one of these holes, you'll see that I'm constantly stalling out the motor. And you might say, well, that's probably because this motor is very small. It's only two-fifths of a horsepower. But in reality, two-fifths of a horsepower for a drill press this size, in my opinion, is plenty. What I'm really lacking is an ability to gear that two-fifths horsepower down to something much, a much slower RPM output, thus giving me substantially more torque. If I was able to bring that down to like 300 RPM or less, I would probably be able to make those drill holes in this metal without even hesitating and, or stalling it up at all. Now the motor is mounted to the drill press using this adjustable spring-loaded tensioner. And that's what allows you to change the belt position between pulleys. What this actually does in addition, however, is it limits the amount of clamping force that the motor can exert on the belt. This allows the belt to slip in lieu of the motor stalling while you're doing cuts. And theoretically, that makes the motor, uh, because it takes less time to spin back up, that gives you more average torque and it only will stall out momentarily as the belt slips rather than for a long amount of time as the motor has to start back up. Now when I was drilling those holes in the, in the previous video, I had actually over tensioned the belt so that it was the motor that was stalling rather than the belt. And at the time I thought that that was the best thing to do because I figured it would give me more torque. But, but just because it gave me a tiny bit more torque doesn't mean it was better off because it did obviously mean I had to wait for the motor to spin back up each time. So if you have this drill press, I would recommend running the motor uh, at the native tension of the belt so that the belt preferentially slips rather than the motor uh, itself stalling out. If you're thinking about buying one of these drill presses, it might not be a bad idea for you to know how much throat depth you have between your drilling implement and the back side of the press. And if you measure, it's almost exactly four inches on the mark between these two. So that may be something you want to keep in mind if you're going to be drilling larger pieces that may require a greater throat depth. Another pro tip that I uh, suggest, I added a couple of neodymium magnets to the side of the drill press on the base here, and that allows me to store the chuck key and the uh, Allen wrenches used for adjustment on the press itself. That way it's much less likely for me to lose these if I'm carting the thing around or moving from place to place. So the real question then is, do I recommend this drill press? For the price, for $58, it is an excellent purchase in my opinion. Now obviously I've only tested this drill press, one of these drill presses, I haven't gone along and tested like 10 of them for reliability, but with the sample size of one with this one, I can say the reliability is excellent. I drilled all of the holes on that aluminum plate that I showed you earlier, and this thing, I must have stalled it out 200 times in the process, but I didn't have any problems with the motor or with the powertrain. Now I did give the motor probably 20 to 30 minutes cooling time for every 10 minutes of really hard drilling, but uh, considering I was able to do that over and over and over again 
for all six holes, it, uh, it really stood the test of high performance use. Now the quill doesn't have too much wavering or uh, instability. It moves side to side just a little bit, but uh, for average drilling applications, this is not a problem. You can see some of my uh, some of my twist drill test holes are very very close to round. There's not a whole lot of deviation in these holes, and uh, that's a sign of a really good straight quill and straight spindle on the press. So I would say uh, I really do like this drill press. I would say for 58 bucks, it's definitely worth it, especially if you're just a hobbyist or kind of uh, not an everyday user of it, but more often just a sort of on the side user of this drill press. I think it would be an excellent choice. Now, would I recommend it for a, an actual machine shop, like, like with daily use? Probably not. You're gonna see a lot of things start to wear out. You're gonna get slop in the quill and spindle. And chances are, if you're running this thing really hard, you'll have to replace the motor at some point. That being said though, for the average user, I would say this is a great purchase. It did everything I needed it to and more. I really only uh, am using this primarily as a small uh, twist drill driver, not, uh, not every day for big stuff like this, but even when I did use it for big stuff like that, it came through and it did the job. So if you're looking at a decently well-built entry-level drill press in the future, I would say this is a good purchase for you. It's uh, robust enough to do most jobs, and for occasional use, I think it would last you a pretty long time. The price is definitely right. It, uh, you can buy this probably for the same cost as a mid-level hand drill, and yet get so much more versatility and performance out of the drill press design. So hopefully you learned something about this Harbor Freight drill press. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.